The term turbo was once a synonym for brute power delivery. Today turbocharged engines set standards in terms of fuel efficiency and smoothness. Visually it resembles a snail's shell, but it makes engines move a lot faster than that. Since the early 70s, Porsche has put its trust in turbochargers as a means of increasing performance. To begin with, Porsche had only planned for 500 units of the 930 series, as it was known internally for it was the number of units required for motorsport homologation. The pleasingly high demand for the wide-bodied bundle of muscles with the mighty rear wing caused a quick rethink. In 1977, the first enhancement was made to the 911 Turbo. Its displacement was increased from 3.0 liter to 3.3 liters and its output rose as much as 300 horsepower. Apart from some smaller modifications, the 930 remained in the product range almost unchanged until 1988. It laid the groundwork for a turbo success story that's currently starting its latest chapter with the 992 generation of the 911. Turbo development has made great strides since 1974, largely thanks to Porsche. Over the decades, Zuffenhausen has come to see the term turbo as synonymous with leading technology. The top model of every 911 generation has the turbo name in it. The technology has established itself as particularly efficient and low emission while also being very cultivated. Perhaps the most impressive achievement is that the turbo engines have reached the level of much larger naturally aspirated engines, even in terms of their responsiveness. Porsche has succeeded in taming the legendary explosive power delivery. Porsche 911 Turbo AKA 930. Even the turbocharger of 1974 Ancestor had an exhaust gas overpressure valve, a wastegate, something that was previously only familiar from racing cars. With a maximum boost pressure of 0.8 bar, it developed 260 horsepower, but the thrust kick in somewhat abrupt at 3500 RPM. In 1977, the 300 horsepower successor appeared with a larger compressor wheel and, at the time, another novelty for passenger cars, an intercooler for the compressed air. Porsche 959 Porsche demonstrated the future potential of turbo technology with the 959, which was first presented at the IAA in 1983 as the Group B study and was launched three years later as a road version. All-wheel drive super sports car has a complex sequential boosting system with two different sized turbochargers. The smaller one responds at lower engine speed. Added to this is an electric boost control system developed by Porsche. The four valve engine also sports water-cooled cylinder heads. Porsche 911 Turbo 3.3 aka 964. The 911 Turbo of the 964 generation with 320 horsepower initially adopted the 3.3 liter engine of the predecessor in 1991. Thanks to the complex exhaust gas after treatment with three-way metal catalytic converters and an additional catalytic converter for the bypass outlet, it met increasingly stringent emission standards. Pressure controlled characteristic map injection and a 50% larger charge air cooler were added as well. A 3.6 liter version followed in 1993, now with 360 horsepower but better fuel economy. Porsche 911 Turbo AKA 993 In 1995, Porsche presented the 911 Turbo of the last air-cooled generation, the 993. It was the first time Porsche relied on the power of two turbochargers in a series production model. Unlike the 959, they were not sequential, but worked in parallel. They each supplied one cylinder bank of the 3.6 liter six-cylinder engine with charge air. The wastegate integrated in the turbo was also new. The 911 Turbo was the lowest emission vehicle of its time and from 1997 the same applied to the Turbo S. In its most radical motorsport inspired version, the 911 GT2, its output can reach up to 450 horsepower. Porsche 911 Turbo S aka 996. The 996 generation introduced in 1997 and its turbo version introduced in 2001 marked a new beginning. All engines including the new 3.6 liter turbo were now liquid cooled. The turbo and turbo S had Vario Cam Plus, 
an adjustment of the intake camshaft, including valve lift switching of the intake valves. The turbo engine was based on the powertrain of the 1998 Le Mans Victor, the 911 GT1. Standard on the Turbo S model, Porsche Ceramic Composite Brakes, PCCB, Tiptronic S was available on request. S owes its 450 horsepower to larger turbochargers, more efficient charge air coolers, and modified catalytic converters. Porsche 911 Turbo, aka 997. The 997 generation 911 Turbo surprised everyone in 2006 with a world first. Porsche had combined a gasoline vehicle with a so-called VTG variable turbine geometry. This means different angles of attack for the guide vanes. At low engine speeds, the vanes stand more upright in the exhaust stream and therefore respond sooner. Although already established in diesel engines, the VTG principle for the gasoline engine of the 911 Turbo had to be developed practically from scratch. The much higher temperatures compared to a diesel engine required materials from the aerospace industry. Porsche 911 Turbo S aka 992. Turbo development had reached new heights in the 992 generation. The new engine of the 911 Turbo S combines wastegates with VTGs with the difference that now they are mirror images of each other and even larger. The advantage to this innovation is that after a cold start, the catalytic converters heat up more quickly because they are warmed up directly via the electronically controlled bypass. There are benefits to efficiency as well. The exhaust back pressure is automatically reduced when operating at full load, which reduces the residual gas in the cylinder that interferes with combustion.